Professor Sean Hendy is a physics professor at the University of Auckland and a COVID modeller, and he joins me now. Um, Sean, this this uh, proof now that these two cases have the same genomic sequencing, why is that important? Yeah, that that tells us that we're dealing with a with probably a very direct link between that the MIQ breach, um, you know, via the Defence Force worker in this case. And that tells us we're not looking at the same situation as we were in August, where we, you know, we basically picked up that, that August outbreak probably two to three weeks into that outbreak. Whereas here we're looking at a, a transmission that probably took place sometime last week. Um, and so that's telling us that there are, there are probably not a large number of other cases out there. Um, and, and that's good news. Can we be certain that the person that's been called Case A, who is the defence worker from MIQ, is the person that gave it to Case D, the retail assistant and student, or could there be someone in between these guys? Uh, look, look, it, it's possible, um, but the most likely scenario is that it, it is probably that that case that passed it on to the student, um, and, and we can we can make educated guesses at that by the the timing of of symptoms when when symptom onset occurred, and that tells us something about when um, the person was likely to have caught the virus. So it's so it's it's possible, but unlikely that there was an intermediary. Health officials have told us today that the working hypothesis is that the two cases were in the same geographic area at a similar time. When you hear that, it seems pretty slim. So does that leave us still wide open to some risk because we don't know the point of contact? Yeah, look, I mean, I, I don't think we can say that there's no risk at, at, at this stage. It's just that, you know, we're not looking at that August scenario, which is really, you know, it's kind of our worst case scenario. So there certainly still is risk. Uh, people need to remain alert, particularly over the weekend and the coming week. Um, and again, you know, I, I think what's going to keep us safe over, over this next period of time is, is mask use, um, using our apps um, and making sure we get a test. I mean, I'd like to see those testing rates jump up over the next few days. Anyone that, that, that thinks they might have come into, into close contact with, with um, one of these cases or anyone that's developed something should be trying to get a test in the next uh, little while. Sean, do you have an idea in your head what the sweet spot is in terms of test numbers when we're faced with a scenario like this? Oh, look, we want to get those numbers right up. I mean, in, in August, that was absolutely incredible. We were processing many tens of thousands uh, of tests a day. Um, in summer conditions, we probably don't need to test as extensively. And that's simply because, um, you know, the, the, the virus is easier to detect in summer when we have less um, flu and colds around. Um, so there's less less of those other, other diseases that will mask it. So if you do have the symptoms, you, you know, it's more likely to be COVID. Um, and so, you know, let's get those testing rates up, up above 10,000 over, over the weekend. I think that would be great. Um, and uh, but we we probably don't need to hit those same heights that we did back in August. At the moment, health officials have given us around about nine venues that this woman went to, the latest case. But the case she's linked to was in the CBD some days before um, the rundown of movements we have been given. So what's the vital information we're missing? Yeah, so, so, so I guess... You know, somehow um, during that period when, when the, that first case was in CBD Auckland, uh, there must have been a casual contact. I mean, well, at least that's the guess, that there was some sort of casual contact. I mean, if people who know uh, downtown Auckland, you know, High Street, the, the bar, that the um, uh, restaurant that, that the Defence uh, Force worker is just off High Street. Um, so, so actually, there's the, you know, these places are, are, are very proximate. Um, and so that you know, there is a chance of of, um, of a casual contact when, when neither party may have known that they were in contact, um, and and that does mean that other people need to be um, you know even if you weren't in those specific locations, if you have been in downtown Auckland, you know that still means you need to be vigilant as well. So we are being asked in Auckland to wear masks on public transport and uh, the Minister for COVID um, response is saying on planes as well and he's going to go to Cabinet on Monday and ask for that to be mandatory. Is that, is, does that go far enough? Um, I, I, I think that's probably a good move now. I mean, I, I would have liked to have seen that done, you know, coming out of August. That was, that was something I thought, you know, that's... It is inconvenient, you know, it's not necessarily pleasant, 
Um, but compared to going into lockdown again, um, and, you know, compared to the, you know, what, what we've had to deal with over the last day, many of us working from home, you know, university exams disrupted, I think that's a small price to pay. So I think that's a good move. Um, if we put that together with increased app use and, and keeping those testing rates up, then I think that's a, that's a good set of responses uh, for the next few days. So while we're doing that now and the minister is doing that now, he's a bit late to the party, is he? I, yeah, no, I, th- I, I think so. This is, this is something, you know, that, that, that those of us involved in the response, we've all been very careful. We've been wearing our masks because we're aware of those risks uh, and it would have been good to, to have had seen this brought in earlier. Sean, the sun is shining outside if you've been out to, in Auckland today and summer is, a, you know, upon us. People are mixing and mingling. Are we going to be able to relax at all this summer? Uh, yeah, good question. I mean, I... I um, you know, summer does come with some advantages. Um, you know, we do know that the, the virus survives better um, in winter conditions. So that should mean that um, that over the summer period, the virus is, is less infectious. Um, and that, that, that will help us deal with these occasional breaches at the border. Um, doesn't mean we can go to sleep. You know, there's certainly parts of the world that have had significant outbreaks outside winter months. And, you know, people remember that Florida and the U.S., was hit quite hard um, uh, during its summer, so we, we, we can't completely relax. Really, I mean, life um, going back to normal, that, that's going to take this vaccine. You know, there is there is some good news um, on the horizon from, from a number of different um, uh, uh, candidate vaccines, and, but that's, you know, that's not going to be a silver bullet. It's going to take time to deploy, and we're going to have to get pretty good coverage across the population before we can really relax. So some good news with, with, with summer approaching, uh, but, but certainly we need to keep our vigilance up over the next few months. Sean, we're almost out of time, but very quickly, do you think we're out of the woods in terms of this case right now? Oh, look, there's still the possibility of, of downstream cases or secondary cases from, from this person. Uh, it would not surprise me if, if we saw some of those. Um, so we're not completely out of the woods yet. Um, you know, we do need to, uh, to keep those testing rates up, locate those cases if they're out there uh, and make sure that they're in, uh, in isolation and not outspreading the virus further. Um, but it's not the worst case scenario. Thank you for um, being with us this evening. That is Professor Sean Hendy there.